Hey everybody, this is a little video for 7.3, the second part of 7.3 in our grade 12 uh, chapter on exponential equations. And we're going to do this little part here where it's uh, called solving exponential equations graphically. Um, and then we'll move into the, the algebra as well. Like here's, here's uh, we're picking up right here where we left off on page nine. So everybody can go to page nine in their booklet. And uh, before we maybe head into this, just to, just to refresh your memory, it, you should remember that way back in, in uh, grade 10, we talked about how you can solve um, equations like, uh, for example, this guy, you know, a system of equations like that. And of course, the way that everybody wants to solve it once you learn how to do it in grade 10 is you want to add the equations together, which will cancel those and leave you with 3x equals 8, x is 8 thirds. But remember that that was actually the third way we taught you how to solve it. The second way was to take, say, this equation and make it into y plus 3 and then substitute that in to this x. And the first way we asked you to solve these kinds of equations is to actually graph them. Graph these two lines and the coordinates of where x and y meet is the answer to the x and y. So we did that in grade 10. Then this year, we've had a few examples, the most recent one being, let me just erase all this, the most recent one being trig, where we solved equations like, for example, um, something like uh, sine of theta um, equals, um, or sine of, let, let me make something a little more interesting here, sine of theta um, plus um, pi by four, is equal to, say, uh, negative one. We, we solve that by graphing the sine of theta plus a quarter, which would be something like, uh, uh, something like you know, this. And then solving for when it met the line. So in other words, we made y equals the sine of theta plus pi by four. And then we met, meant y equals, we made the line y equals negative one. And the place where those graphs meet, the x-coordinates are the solutions, in this case for theta, x, theta, whatever you want to call it. So we've seen this strategy a couple times. We actually saw it back in the uh, radicals unit as well. If I wanted to solve an equation like, uh, a sec here, if I wanted to solve an equation like um, the square root of x plus 3 equals um, 1, I can do it algebraically, or I can graph that, which would be 1, 2, 3, this, this guy here, and then graph the line at 1, and that's x coordinate is my answer to this equation's x. So we've done this strategy a bunch of times in this course. Now we're going to do it one more time, specifically, when we're solving exponential graphs using graphs. They're solving exponential equations using graphs. So um, the best way to do this, my tech is kind of being strange here today. Uh, best way to do this is to, uh, again, make y equals this side of the equation, y equals that side of the equation. Usually you do the side with the exponent first. It's kind of the harder one. And usually I start by making my, my parent function. So my parent function for this would be to compare it to y equals 3 to the power of x. So y equals 3 to the power of x, I'll use a lighter color for this. It goes through here, and then when x is, right, when x is 0, 3 to the power of 0 is 1. When x is 1, I get 3. When x is 2, it already jumps up to 9. So it kind of goes up like that. And of course, when x is negative 1, you get a third. And when negative 2, you get a ninth. So you get a curve that way. There we go, something like that. There we go, there's my, there's my parent function. Those, say, four dots, actually I'll just stick to three. These three dots are really all I need to actually now graph this thing. I'm gonna graph it by just uh, translating. So it moves one unit to the right because of this minus one. So let's move, and then it moves two units up. So I'm gonna take this dot and move it one unit to the right and two units up. Now it's here. I'm going to take this dot, move it one unit to the right, 
and two units up. Now it's here. And I'll take uh, my, say, what? oh, actually, I did have a dot here too, didn't I? So I'll move that dot one unit to the right and two units up. And while I'm at it, I could do one other thing to make my graph uh, work well and, and look better besides join the three black dots. Remember that on my blue graph, the x-axis is an asymptote, right? You can see it's curving towards it over here. Um, why is it an asymptote? Well, because there's no possible way for y to be zero. Think about it. Three times itself, any number of times, can't be zero. So no matter what this x is, even if I put in a negative, that still gives me fractions. It doesn't give me zero. If I put in a decimal, again, it gives me fractions it doesn't, it, and decimals, it doesn't give me zero. There's no number of threes, even, even multiplied by themselves a fraction of times, that would ever actually give me zero. So that's, that's an asymptote. Now, that means that back at this equation, this thing here can't be zero, which means that y can't be two. I think I'm ready to graph this now. It's going, it, oh wait, let's use the wrong color, black. It's going up this way, and two is my asymptote. So there we go, we have graphed y1. Y2 is pretty easy, five. There we go, there's Y equals five. I wanna label this, this is Y1, this is Y2, and there is my answer. My answer is X equals two. And I, I wanna point out that my answer is of course, again, X equals two is the solution. Um, I wanna point out, I have to take off half a mark if you tell me that the solution is two, five. Because five isn't part of the answer. Notice this equation that we started with doesn't have any y in it. So giving me a y coordinate is not uh, a purposeful answer. We invented y. Why is something that we threw into the equation just to, into the situation just to help us figure out how to solve it? So there we go. So there we are solving graphically. X equals two for that one. And let's solve it algebraically just to make sure that we got it right. So let's see, what's the equation again? It is five equals three to the x, five is equal to three to the x minus one. Was it plus two? Plus two. Plus two. Okay, so I'm gonna minus two from both sides of the equation. And then I'm going to uh, realize that that's a one and I'm gonna make a new equation. Therefore, one is equal to x minus one. And I'm gonna add one to both sides, so x is equal to two, which is what we got when we graphed it. Yay! That's all there is to it. Good luck, you can now do all of the rest of the questions in the uh, 7.2 uh, uh, assignment book. Let me just go to that assignment book real quick here. If you take a look at the chapter seven assignment book, you can now do um, all of the uh, Actually, it's 7.3 is what it is. I think this book is actually mis mislabeled. Yeah, this, this should be 7.2 and 3, really. Uh, I told you to do up to 3. You can now do 4 and 5, so you can try all those. And uh, if you're wondering, hey, there's, there's still more in the booklet, though, after that, but there's no, there's no worksheet for it, that's because we kind of do word problems afterward on Chapter 8. So actually, what I'm going to do is we're going to kind of toggle back and forth. We will finish the rest of the Chapter 7 booklets uh, where we go into these uh, applications and word problems. We're gonna do that after we've done some chapter eight. So that's, this is why we're mixing chapter eight into, uh, and chapter seven into one thing that we'll test all together. So we're gonna hold off on, on this lesson until after we're done some of chapter eight. Okay, all right, good luck with the homework. Thanks for watching.